Today we take a look at the U-Tool Pistol Grease Gun. We got our flexible hose, which is probably the one I'm going to be using because this will allow you to get into tighter spots. It already comes with the Zerk fitting installed. It has a cap on it. It's a nice little touch. So you got two of them. Usually they give you one and you can put it on whichever one you want. But we actually got two on this one. It's kind of cool. But this is the stiff one, so if you want to be able to operate this one-handed, so like if you need to hold something and then you can just grab the whole gun and stick it on, this is the one you want to use. If you're using a lever action pump, you always want to use one of these. But this is a pistol grease gun. Cool. It's got a good feel to it. So this has a lever lock. So you pull this out, it's going to hold it, press it, and let's go in. It's got a little rubber grip on here. These things are pretty good most of the time, but if you get a lot of grease behind it, because this thing can peel up, eventually it starts slipping around. I use a lot of grease guns, it's just the way these things go. So you actually have a second stiff nozzle holder, and we have a precision tip, so if you just need a grease inside of a bearing or something like that, we're not going to be attaching directly to the Zerk. Use that. We can stick it on the top or on the front. So you just take an Allen, stick it on here, unthread this, and stick it in there. Then you can put your hose on the top. You always use the front. There we go. So now we got that on there. We can get that wherever we need it. We do have a bulk loader on here. We never use those. We usually used to throw a Zerk on here, and then we can put another grease gun on here and fill it like that. And then we have the air port right here. This thing's actually got a Phillips on there. Anyway, if you find that uh, you fill it up and you keep on pumping and it's not happening, then you just press it on that, and then you'll start pumping, and it'll allow the air to escape so that the grease can get inside and actually start pumping. Because the entire pumping mechanism right here so if there's no grease in there like if you got a pocket between here and here then you're not going to be able to pump any grease out and it looks like it actually comes primed with some grease in it so that's good so by me pulling this thing off and starting squeezing it i actually push some of that grease out so i'm gonna fill this guy up now i have bulk grease so i'm just going to fill this but you always want to put a liner in there so if you don't have a tube of grease then just buy a new tube of grease put that in first because you need to be able to make this area a little bit smaller so that the seal has something to seal against Otherwise, grease will just go behind the seal, and whenever you pull this back, pull the plunger back, the grease will just come out the end. So I'm going to be replacing this one, because as you can see, it's kind of broke. They're almost all levers, except for this one, because this is a special grease. You see it's got that weird fitting on there. But all of our pistol grips are dead, just because that's how grease guns go. So eventually this one will die that's why i don't spend a lot of money on grease guns anymore i've bought really expensive ones it doesn't matter they just all break this one's broke so this one's going to be replacing it so i always use the old gun just like whatever parts i can get off of this thing because every grease gun is going to have a different point where it's going to break i've had these things pop but we're talking about eight thousand pounds of pressure and if i'm lucky yeah so I'm going to take this off, so if I can reuse this, that'll make my life a little easier. So here I have an empty tube of grease, and I'm just using this so that that seal has something to press up against. There we go. So you can see the seal now is inside that tube. So now I can fill this up. So you got this big container of grease, and on here, you can see it's pneumatic, and it is quite messy. But we can use this to fill up these tubes. There we go. So you see, I overfill it just a little bit, so that way when I spin this thing on, it'll kind of fill up that cavity. That way, I'm not having to fight the air. So you don't have to get it super tight. You don't have to get a wrench on this thing. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to press in on that button. And I'm going to release the plunger. All right, so we got some grease coming out. So now we should be fairly primed and ready to go. There we go. So we got grease coming out. Okay. So this is ready. Now you can keep this cap on here. Like if you got some grease dripping off like that, you can just kind of put the cap over it. We're just kind of messy. So this is probably just gonna get in the way. But I'm just gonna pop that off. 
You see, now that we got this zerk on here, when this thing gets low, I can just pull that handle out, stick this on here, and fill it up like that. Now, the danger there is, of course, if you overfill this thing, you'll blow that seal up, and then you'll always have grease coming through the back. So that's one of the reasons that we have to buy so many grease guns, is because that happens a lot. For me personally, the only way that I fill up a grease gun is the way that I just showed you. I take the lid completely off, fill it from the bottom up, and then put the lid back on. That way I can ensure that I'm not blowing up that seal. And I've used a few grease guns like this, and sometimes you'll find that you'll be pumping along, but nothing will be happening. And uh, when that happens, sometimes that's because this lever can stick up. This is always going to be trying to push down. But as this is pushing down, this might jam against it and then hold it there. And then you won't be pushing any grease. So if that happens, just press the handle and start working again. Now, the other thing that people should be aware of, but they don't really seem to be, is that the way Zerks are supposed to work is you pop this thing on. We're talking 8,000 pounds of pressure that is being forced down. So if this thing could easily pop off, that would be a problem because you'd never be able to get grease inside of it. The way you take these off, you don't pull straight you you pull to the side you have to bend it and it always pops right off if you try to pull up you're going to struggle all you got to do is bend it to the side it comes right off all right tight easy so that's how these things work they always work like that now sometimes i have seen grease cirques that are in a hole so you have to you know get it inside the hole and then you don't really have room to bend it. And if you got that situation, well, you kind of got a problem. I mean, all you can really do there is complain about the person that made it that way. They do make things that you can stick inside the hole and clamp it on, and then you press a button and to pull it out. As long as that thing can fit, those work great for that. But if it's made crummy, then uh, you're just going to have a crummy time. Most circs are like this to where you can bend it off. All right? So as long as you use it like that, this thing should last a long time. Eventually it's gonna break. I just kind of expect it to. If you use grease guns a lot, they're all gonna break. But overall, yeah, this looks like a pretty good grease gun. So I'm happy to use it.